Today I'm going to be reviewing this book, Writing for the King. And this was published by FTD, Follow That Dream, in 2006. And it contains 142 interviews with the people who wrote the songs that Elvis recorded. And there are about 400 pages in this book. It's very heavy, so I'm just going to put it down. It comes with two CDs. One is called Recordings, and that's basically live recordings from 1969 and 1970 recorded in Las Vegas. None of them are unreleased. And the second one is by far the more interesting CD, and that's called Demos. And if you're interested in Elvis as a recording artist, then it's one of the most essential CDs you could ever hear because it contains the demo recordings that Elvis himself listened to before making his own versions. The book starts with interviews with the composers of Heartbreak Hotel, and the last chapter in the book is with the composer of Way Down, and the CD is the same. The first track on the CD is Heartbreak Hotel, and the last one is Way Down. The book and the CD complement each other in other ways that you can hear if you listen to the demos CD. One thing that many of the composers point out is that Elvis and his groups would basically copy the musical arrangements on the demos. And I don't think they're doing that to criticize Elvis, but because they were flattered that they would do that. Another thing that most of the composers point out is that Elvis actually improved the vocals. And interestingly, many of the demo recordings were performed by one of the composers. There are a lot of interesting tidbits throughout the book as well. For example, Don Robertson in his interview says that he got the title What Now, What Next, Where To from a line in a poem that he read. And he explains that the song Anything That's Part of You came about because he was dating an air hostess at the time and they would spend long periods of time apart and he missed it very much. And he eventually went on to marry the woman. So it's interesting that a song that seems to be about a breakup was actually based on a relationship that was very much alive and kicking. And Don Robertson actually sings the lead vocal on the demo to No More. I close my eyes and clearly my heart remembers A thousand goodbyes could never put out the embers Personally, I was most interested in reading the interviews with the teams of composers that wrote for Elvis's movies. People such as Tepper and Bennett, Wise and Wiseman and Giant Boom and Kay. I thought that they would be defensive about or even dismissive of the songs that they wrote for Elvis's movies, but that wasn't the case. Let me read an extract from the interview with Florence Kay. The script might say, Elvis is attracted to two girls and can't choose between them, so we wrote one boy, two little girls. One of our favourite soundtracks of songs we wrote for Elvis was from the movie Harem Scarum. It included two beautiful romantic ballads, Golden Coins and Mirage. It also included a sensual rendition of Animal Instinct, a masculine adventure song, Go East, Young Man, and Wisdom of the Ages. With a song like Wisdom of the Ages, I knew that I could really delve into my philosophy and spiritual message. So you can see that far from being embarrassed by the songs I wrote for the movies, this is a fairly typical interview in which you can see that the composer is actually very proud of what they did. While I think describing Golden Coins as a beautiful romantic ballad is probably going a bit far, I did come away with a new appreciation for the songs that were written for the movies after reading the book. There was a lot of competition to get these songs into the movies and I think that the writers were actually genuinely trying to write good tunes for these films, despite the limitations that they were working under, such as having to write a song for a particular scene, or even to write a song with a certain title. Not all of the writers were totally impressed with Elvis's efforts. Some of the writers actually said they preferred the demos, and John Fogerty of CCR was more flattered than impressed with Elvis's version of Proud Mary. And the book itself is not without its faults, the biggest of which is there is no song index. So if you want to look up a particular song, you need to know who the songwriter was. Another problem with the book is that none of the interviews are dated, 
so we don't know when and where they were first published. But the good points about this book far, far outweigh the bad. You learn a lot about the industry, the songwriting process, and the writers themselves. Florence Kay, for example, wrote the lyrics in all those giant Baum K compositions. And Giant, Bill Giant, he initially didn't want to work with Florence Kay because she was a woman. But most importantly, you certainly learn a lot about Elvis as a performer. And listening to the demo CD will certainly put an end to the ridiculous argument that Elvis was nothing more than a karaoke singer. You 